Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Good morning. Welcome, welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. I'm your host, Minister Edward Broom. Let's get right into it, shall we? Father God in heaven, it's in Jesus' name. God in heaven, I pray that you would, uh, <clears throat> I pray you have your way this morning, Lord God. Uh, Lord God, uh, take distractions out of the way, Lord. Clear my heart, clear my mind. Remove any thoughts, Lord God, that, that, that are um, contrary to your will. Remove any thoughts or or hindrances, Lord God, that would uh, prevent me, God, from delivering the message to your people. That would prevent me from saying what you want to be heard and doing what you want to be done, Lord God. Have your way, God. Give me peace. Give me wisdom, Lord God. Give me joy, Lord God. And Lord, use me as the vessel that you put the word in and as the messenger who delivers that word. And God, I thank you, God, for, for everything, Lord. You just don't know where well, you do know, God. <laughs> People just don't know how much I appreciate you, Lord. God, a lot of us, a lot of us love you, Lord God, with all our hearts. Some of, some people may not recognize or, or be able to physically see that love, God, but we're grateful. We're grateful and we're thankful, Lord, that 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 you loved us first and that you chose us and you called us, God, to be your own. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, man, I'm going to say this before I get into the uh, stuff, man. I, we got some news. We got some news last night. And this morning I'm up trying to check and see. I mean, I stayed. We stayed up to maybe two some. I don't know about two thirty. Then I get up at five thirty. So I might have got. So that means I could have possibly got three hours of sleep. But I don't know what time I fell asleep. But I, this morning I was trying to check and see, and apparently don't nobody. You know, everybody ain't up early in the morning like me trying to do some. Some people are early bird, morning birds. Some people are night owls. But I was trying to, uh, so trying to check and see, trying to check and see what what happened. I was trying to check and see if something's real. And I want to say this here before I read the scripture. Um, the reason why a lot of people don't believe because they try to check and see, and they can't see it, so they don't believe it. But our salvation is not based on. What we can check and see is based on what we believe. Therefore, faith comes by <laughs> hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. We walk by faith, not by sight. We don't walk by what we can see, but what we believe. And we believe that the word of God is true. We believe that the word of God is uh, uh, 
life. And we believe that the word of God is our blueprint for this life right here on earth. Um, today's scripture is coming from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 12 through 17. It says, therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. And make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, although he sought it diligently with tears may the Lord bless the readers the hearers and especially the doers of his holy word I'm uh I'm gonna quit freestyling go off this paper here man I go off this uh off my commentary that I wrote down that I in the morning in the scripture in the verse here in the verse here uh it tells us to make straight paths for our feet Here's a question on the table. How can we make our paths straight? Oh, Lord, excuse me. Excuse me, forgive me. Um, how can we make our paths straight? Proverbs chapter uh, 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. Verse 6 says, In all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. God's word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. That's Psalm 119, verse 105. God says, your, lamp, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. God's word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. We make our path straight by laying down God's word as the foundation. That's got to be the foundation. And anything that you try to build on the foundation that's not that's not solid, it's not tied into that right there, guess what? It's not gonna stand up. Everything gotta be rooted and grounded in the in in the in the Savior, in the in the, the Savior, Jesus Christ, in the found He is the foundation. He is the, the chief cornerstone. We make our path straight. Not by doing something, not by uh going and getting into a uh going and creating a plan on how you're gonna stop uh fornicating. Not not by creating, uh, not by coming up with with the community of, of people who are gonna who are gonna help you stop uh, committing adultery or getting high or lying or stealing or something. You make your path straight by walking on the word of God. It's gotta be rooted and grounded in the word of God. I remember uh, a few months ago we had a Bible study. It was one, I think it was one of those evangelism Bible studies, and um, I know one of my sisters was adamant about um. Um, um, a community relying on community. I, I believe the only time you should rely on the community is when the community is rooted and grounded in Christ. And I just taught a Bible study about this. I said, go to advice from people who are in Christ. It don't matter if they're your wise OGs, elders in the family, elders in the community, in the neighborhood. If they are hundred years old, if they are not in Christ. You don't go to them for advice. If a person, if a person don't believe it, that Christ is 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 the one, you, I don't want to hear what you got to say because you have some basic things that you have uh, that you that you uh, that you have misinterpreted. You have some basic you have some basic things that you haven't achieved yet. And achieving the belief in Christ Jesus is is is, is very critical, especially if you're in a position to teach somebody or tell somebody something or or lead someone or have a have have power over somebody or have authority. You need to be in Christ in order to do 
to 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 lead in a godly manner. Um, it, as long as we don't walk away from God's word, we will walk a straight line to the Lord. We have to make our we make our path straight by laying down God's foundation, and then walking on it. When I'm laying down the God. The word of God is is the foundation. Jesus must be the foundation, and then we walk on that foundation that's rooted and built up in him. We stand on that foundation. You'll notice that the minute you step off of that foundation, it's all type of things going on. It's because it ain't lined up with the word of God. It's not lined up with the one who saved you, the one who died for you. So, 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 the only way we can uh, make our path straight is if we have Jesus as the foundation. As long as we don't walk away from God's word, we will walk a straight line. That's a, we will walk a straight path to the Lord Jesus. Now, when I'm saying walk a straight line, walk a straight path, am I talking about live a life without committing a sin? No, of course not. Nobody's going to live their life without committing a sin. Nobody. Only Jesus did that. That's why his blood is sufficient for all sin because he lived a perfect life. He came as uh, he came and uh, ooh, man, he came under the law and of divine nature. He was born under the law. You know, a Jew uh, by you know he came down through the bloodline uh, uh, of uh, of David. You know what I'm saying? Mary was one of David's uh, 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 what you call it, ancestors or whatever you call them descendants. Mary, one of David's descendants, she descended from David, and uh, and he, even his even Jesus' stepfather Joseph descended from David as well. When you look up the family line, you see that one came down through Solomon, and one came down through I think Nathan, two of David's sons. Uh, you know, I, I I'm I think that's correct. I'm not sure though, but uh, but but that's the, but Jesus came through there though. You know what I'm saying? And um, he didn't have that sin nature. He didn't inherit that sin nature from Adam who sinned in the garden, you know, but, and so he was the perfect sacrifice. Now, listen, when we walk, when we walk on, on, on the foundation that's rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ, we walk on the word, then repentance and forgiveness can be found by us. Then and only then can we find repentance and, and forgiveness because of, um, let me keep going right here. However, it is hard for some people to come to repentance. If they think they have not done wrong or sinned, first John, first John chapter one, verses eight and nine says, if we say that we have not sinned, if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That's what the Lord says. That's what the word of the Lord says. But it's hard for some people to come to repentance if they don't think they've sinned. They don't think they've done anything wrong. True repentance is acknowledging that you are wrong and the word of God is right. See there? And I and I stress this so much. I and, and I oh God gonna have to work on me, man. You're gonna give me more courage, man. I stress this a lot though. I say, uh, I say, uh, what, what I think, what I say in my opinion does not matter. Even what I tell you and teach you on here, it does not matter unless it's rooted and grounded in the word of God. Unless it's the word of God. Now, if I take the word of God and I give a testimony or an experience and say, see there, the word of God is true, that's good. But if I take the word of God and I give a testimony or an experience or, or an example that says the word of God is not true. Eh, wrong answer. That's you know what I'm saying. That's that's a dangerous road to walk on, trying to disprove the word of God or trying to discredit the word of God or trying to trying to take away uh, uh the authority of of the Lord and say he's not the Lord or what have you. So as long as it's in the word of God, it's good. And you don't have to take my word for it. Go and read the word for yourself. That's why I try to give scriptures. So you can go and read it for yourself and see, hey, this man here is telling the truth because it's wrote down right there. Now, if you don't believe that the Holy Bible is the word of God, you have another problem. For those who don't believe that, that who don't believe in God, they have a huge problem 
for those who believe in God, but they don't think that the that the, the Holy Bible is the word of God, they have a huge problem. You know what I'm saying? For those who believe in the Bible, but they but they but they think that uh there's another God who's not in the Bible, they have a huge problem. So there are three types of people. They will have a problem for sure. The ones who don't believe, the ones who don't believe the word of God, but the ones who partially believe one and don't believe the other. There are, those are problems. You know, you have to believe. You, have, you must place your faith in Jesus. Um, true repentance is acknowledging that you are wrong and the word of God is right, that the Lord Jesus is right, the Almighty Father is right. If you know that, if you know that the word of God is right and you are wrong, then you know that you cannot be saved from God's wrath without Jesus. If you know that the word of God is right, you know that it says the wages of sin is death. You deserve to be dead, eternal death, eternal separation from God for your sins. If you read the word of God and you believe the word of God. And once you know that, and once you know that what repentance means, you, you changing your mind about something so that your mind lines up with the, the will and mind and the word of God, and you know that you need Jesus to be saved. All things must be surrendered to Jesus, even your thoughts and your ideas. Uh, I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It says, uh, casting down imaginations and uh, yeah, for the weapons, for the weapons of our warfare are, 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 are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Here's the key verse I want to get you to. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Anything you think you can, anything that you can think of or any idea that you can come up with that's against the knowledge of God, the word of God, you better cast it down. You need to cast it down. All things must be surrendered to Jesus, even your thoughts and your ideas, especially your actions, your words, your emotions, your intentions. All of them must be surrendered to God. Then and only then can you walk as a child of the most high God. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word this morning, God. God, I pray that if people received it, I pray that uh, if there's anything I left out, God, you added. I pray, God, for strength for us, all of our, all of my uh, Manhattan Christian Fellowship Church family, Lord God. God, I know the the, the title of the uh, passage was Family Matters, God. I need you to show me what that means, God, this morning. And God, help. God, I know I made a, I know I, I said some things to you, Lord. And I'm going to try to hold my end of those things, God. But I need you to help me, God. I need you to help me, God. Help us all, Lord God. Help us all, Lord God, to do what you want us to do, to do your will, God, to be to be ambassadors for Christ and to be shepherds for your sheep, Lord God, if you've given us that position, to be leaders for those who are who are blind, Lord God, and lead them to, to the light so that they can see, to be, to be lovers for those who feel unloved, to be family for those who feel abandoned so that God you can show yourself to them through us and God I pray for strength strength Lord God strength Lord God for all of your people that we may continue to trust in you that we may continue to follow you that we may continue to believe you that we may continue to love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. All right. Okay. That's it. If the Lord is willing, we're going to be right back here tomorrow morning around the same time. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you.
Ich bin stolz, dass du da bist.